Amen. Go with me to the book of John, chapter 9, starting at verse 1. Very in tune. Amen. 
uh, I start to recognize different people's footsteps before they even came. I could tell you who the person was because based on how slim or heavy you are in the gate you have in your wall, it literally determines who you are. And, um, and in the story today, we're, gonna, we're still in this thing about restoration. See, one thing about it is that, 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 that God loves restoring and repairing things. Uh, because like I told you before, uh, when something has to be restored, it increases in value. Anybody ever had to restore a house? Anybody ever seen somebody with a 57 Chevy? Uh, what they paid for back in 57 and what it's worth now if it's restored is now it, the value has increased. Hold on, I'm talking to us all now. Uh, if God has to bring us to places of restoration, every time he restores an area that, that's not the way that it was created to be, your value increases. Good Lord, y'all don't want to worry me. Uh, so day by day, and week by week, and month by month, and year by year, as the Holy Ghost is working on us, our value increases. And there are people around us, they, 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 they see the shortcomings, they see the failures, they see the brokenness, but they don't see the areas where God has worked on us and know that my value has increased even though your appraisal of me is not correct. Good God Almighty. And see, it, it takes someone who who has been licensed and certified in appraising to recognize your value. Oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. So today, this, this brother's value is going to come up because, like I said, when you get into restoration, and see the thing about it, if a house is restored and the value goes up, then it literally brings up the value of the houses around it. So when God brings your value up, good God Almighty, anybody who comes around you, their value then has to, their value has to come up just by being around you. And there are some people who want to stay at a low value because they don't recognize how God has appraised you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. They running away from you and God is bringing you so to increase their back. All right. All right. All right. Let me, let me move on. I'm about to get happy on this day. I'm about to say the doors of the church are open. Lord, have mercy. The Bible says in Jesus pass by, Jesus crosses over uh, here to this, this area. And when he passed by, how, how many of y'all know that the, the Bible says that Jesus was led of the Spirit? Wherever he went, he was led of the Spirit. And, and so when Jesus passed by, the anointing of God passes by. The purpose of God passed by. The prayers that have went up are now about to be answered when Jesus passed by. Yeah. So when Jesus passed by, everything concerning you now, God starts to deal with it. Uh, okay, Lord have mercy. Okay, maybe y'all ain't catching it. Uh, have you ever walked somewhere and before you got there, somebody passed by and they had on some good smelling perfume or cologne? And you knew that this person had went by based on the smell and the atmosphere? Yeah. Oh, oh, look at my God. Almighty. You cannot even let an anointed man or woman or child, for that matter, of God pass by and you not feel the change in the atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, okay, y'all. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So Jesus passed by and he saw a man which was blind from birth. All right. So he perceived that this man was blind from birth. And so some people can see you and they see your issue, but they don't know how long you had the issue. Right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and so, so, so there are people looking at you and they don't understand your struggle. They don't understand your hurt. They don't understand your pain. But when Jesus passed by, he perfectly knows. Yeah. 
How long? The whys of why you are this way. How it has affected you. And I'm so glad that when he passed by that he's compassionate enough to stop and see about you instead of keep going like them folks do because they don't want to deal with your problems and issues and maybe it's good that they can pass because they don't have the power to do anything about it. I'd rather have Jesus come and somebody who can touch me, change me, restore me, heal me, pick me up, put me down when I get too high. You need Jesus coming by you. You need the anointed son of God, the redeemer. Good God Almighty, who can restore your value. Bible says that this man was blind from birth. He never knew what it looked like to see a sunrise. He never knew what it looked like to see a flower bloom. He never knew uh, to see the different colors. He never, don't know what the sun looks like, nor the sky looks like. He don't even know what his mama and daddy look like. He lives his life in darkness. He is not able to enjoy what everybody else enjoys. And sometimes we take stuff for granted. I, I, I never understood what it means to take something for granted when I could not even just walk from my bed to the restroom and I had to crawl. Then I, I start thanking God for just the ability to walk. Y'all with me? I couldn't even stand to ride in the car, so I'm thinking, God, that God, thank you that you, I could even drive. I thank you, Lord, that I could just lay in the bed, and the, the bed is stationary. Instead of feeling like I'm, I'm on a cruise all night long in the bed, rocking. Y'all ain't with me. See, there's some stuff that we take for granted Be, because we have it, but other folks are deficient in it. And, and God, by His grace, has allowed us to have it, even though we don't appreciate it.
The reason you can't keep no, no money because your granddaddy stole money. He was a hustler. Baby, <laughs> if I get you off around me, I always ask him something. No, I'm just teasing. No, I'm just teasing. Let me move on. Don't get in front of the shit. Now, now here, here, here they go, master, teacher, rabbi. Who did sin? I, see, we don't know, but we're depending on you since you are our teacher. Explain the situation of this person to us. Now, which one of them messed up, Paul? The mama or the dad? Dad looked like he might have done a roll or something. Did he do it? Okay, y'all y'all step on me. I ain't talking about your mama and your dad. Mama and dad. And I'm sure they ain't do everything right. I know they ain't do everything right. That's why I pray and call on every morning. Long come on my mom and dad. Long let the favorite code that you got on me extend far beyond unto them. Yeah, okay, y'all don't want to get rid of it. Alright, keep thinking your mom and dad ain't never did nothing. <laughs> you gotta come on. Don't talk somebody dad. <laughs> All right, here you go. This man or his parents? Which one? Did he do it or did they do it? And don't that sound like us in church? Yes. Jesus, which one did? Did they do it or did the mom and dad do it? Don't that sound like some good church gossip? Come on, y'all. Y'all, y'all, so y'all, y'all know. As soon as we leave here, that's what's gonna be going on. How did it look? Who did it? Which, which one? Why Pastor Troy didn't see me say he see everything? <laughs> I, I see what the law revealed to me. Other than that, I didn't see nothing. <laughs> Why he ain't do nothing with it? Why you ain't do nothing with it? You don't want gospel by it. I ain't gospel by it. The law say don't touch it this week. So I ain't touching it this week. <laughs> Here it is. Jesus answered, ooh, look at this. Look at this. Your perception is wrong. Oh, okay. See, this man is not the only one blind. Yeah, right. Jesus got some folks uh, who are walking with him who need corrective lenses. Yeah, yeah. And how many of us we can see, but we need corrective lenses in the spirit because we judge and stuff we don't know nothing about. And so there vision needed correcting just as well as this man's vision needed correcting. And how many of us are judging stuff when we're not discerning it correctly because we ain't truly asked Jesus. We're already throwing questions of judgment out without asking the true and righteous judge, the one who reveals all things. Okay. See, that's going to be three sets of folks here going to get their eyes fixed. This man, Jesus' disciples, in Pharisee. All of them need to touch from Jesus to touch their eyes. This man, physically. The disciples in the soldiers' realm, they look twisted. The Pharisees, their religion is got them a little twisted. And Jesus is going to give all of them the answer yeah. that they need. Isn't it amazing that we'll be looking at somebody and think that they have a disability and we got it too? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, they can't walk. Mm -hmm. They might be in a wheelchair. But you just failed. Y'all don't catch that. <laughs> you need crutches. Oh, you gonna catch that too. You need a wheelchair. Gonna catch that one also. Yeah, y'all ain't catching it. Anybody ever kept? Just keep falling. Y'all don't want to admit it. You don't want to admit that you keep falling. And the Lord has to keep picking you up. And sometimes he has to put a crutch beside you. Somebody who can walk with you and pray for you and fast for you. And you need a crutch to he brings restoration to your limp, to your weak legs. Thank you, God. Oh, God, he 
hit me with that one time. I said, well, they can't walk. He said, neither can you. He said, because you try to do this on your own. You ain't depending on me. Ain't gonna do it. 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 Gonna do it. Right back into it. Okay, y'all. Y'all see? Y'all just was fake as all get out. Y'all all playing some of these Gucci pocketbooks around here. You want me real? That ain't that's why. See, if folks looking at you, mm, they just limping everywhere they go. They see you. Y'all tell me I got a milk book, but I got when I came up, you had to have a pimp walk. I got a pimp walk with it. The Holy Ghost gonna straighten it all out. He gonna sanctify me. Good God, yeah. Y'all let, let, let me move on. Let me move a little bit because y'all like that. Uh, here it is. He was born blind. All his life he been blind. And they can't figure out who messed up. Some stuff God just allows so that he can get glory and show out. Some stuff God just leaving it there because guess what? I'm going to use what's going on with you so that I get glory and when the process of correcting you, I'm going to correct him and her and him and her and I'm going to use your stuff to deal with everybody's stuff. You just happen to be the focal point. Because when I know your problem, the rest of them get to see the anointing at work. And they don't realize that they need me just as much as you need me. See, the greater the issue and the problem, the, the, the longer you have had it and the severity of it brings more glory to God. See, the worse the case, the greater, the greater the glory. I'm going to say that again. The worse the case, the greater the glory God gets when he deals with it. We look at that one another, oh, they jacked up. Oh, God going to get glory out. I'm going to say that again. We look at one another, oh, they jacked up. Oh, God going to get glory out. You might be looking at me like, ooh, Pastor, we got to pray for him. You got to, ooh, you just don't know that God going to get the glory out of this old bald head slim boy right here. Okay, see, either you can look at it glass half empty a glass full of the glory of God. Amen. Oh, okay. It, it is. He said, it, it, it. look here. The works of God should be made manifest in him. That meaning that, that God literally wants to declare and make apparent his words. See, you know what I figured out? There is some stuff that goes on with people physically. That it, it, it's really not about the physical issue. That God is doing some spiritual stuff even deeper. Amen. And sometimes he allows certain things to take place in the physical realm to correct things that's out of balance in the spirit realm. Yeah. And then uh, the person who's going through it realize, you know what, it really wasn't about that. It was really about me coming into a true relationship with God. Or me growing deeper in my relationship with God. Or me humbling myself and walking before God in obedience. Yeah. And in faith. And it took that to get me to here. Yeah. How many of us went through stuff and what we went through really wasn't about that particular issue, but it was about our walk of faith with God. Yeah. And then later on you said, oh, I'm glad I went through it. I wasn't glad when I was in it, but now I'm glad that I went through it. Now I know him in a better way than I ever knew him before. I will change not that I went through. I will change how they hurt me, how they lied on me, how they rejected me. When I thought it was my friend, when I got in trouble, when I fell short, they made me hang it, and God allowed them to do it to let you know that I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will provide for you. I will be your morning star. When you hear me at night, I'll be the one to comfort you. When, when nobody else will help you, my holiness will be your helper, your comforter. Sanctify you. I'm going to make you display the holiness that only comes.
for me. I'm going to beat that righteous nigga because you ain't going on your own. Then he'll let them jokers go through the same thing and let them know that you ain't all that either. I'm talking about with my God. Cut ain't it awesome? Good God, I'm going to feel that old school going coming on. Because right before I got down here, I would have feeling worth two cents, y'all. I would have I said, Lord, now here we go again, Lord, if you don't keep me. If you don't keep me up right, I ain't going to be able to preach. And then he said, now you know, you know, every time you feel something on this level spiritually, that I show up. I said, oh, Lord, I, I, I said, Lord, it, it slipped my memory. He said, oh, yeah, that I bring all things back to your hands. He said, this is because the word is going to be strong. And then the ones who are being hit is because they praying for the word to be strong. Y'all ain't with me. He, 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 he. he said, look here. He said, look, I got to work the works of him that sent me. You, you, got, you got to catch this. Always give the glory to whom glory is due. Always let folks know that I didn't come into this on my own. I was sick. That you got to catch me. Uh, the most important, one of the most important spiritual concepts and principles in the spirit realm is not going on your own. Amen. That you got to be sent. Y'all ain't with me. The Bible says, how can they preach unless they be sent? And when you sent, you don't have your own mission. You work the mission of the one who sent you. And guess what? That the one who sent you has to give you the authority, the power, the resources, the provision for everything to fulfill what you were sent for. Amen. Long John didn't get happy about that. Jesus is not worried about if he got the power to heal this man. Yeah. The fact that he was sent declares that y'all, maybe y'all ain't read Isaiah 61. Be with Isaiah 61 and the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me. Part of that is to open the eyes of the blind. Thank God Almighty. Some of the stuff you're going to do ain't just about preaching the gospel. It's confirming the gospel through miracle signs and wonders. And then God is going to allow you to come through some people that need restoration, that need healing, that need deliverance, that need a hand up, that need encouragement. Get back on the job. God called you. God sent you. Preach the gospel. Pray the word. Touch. Heal. Cast out demons. Love them. Be patient with them. Be long suffering with them. Y'all ain't with me. I sent you. Forget what they say about you. They can't confirm you. I affirm you. I wanted you. I you, I feel you with the Holy Ghost. I gave you the gift. Not fell. They need to come check with me. They don't realize that they prophesying and seeing through familiar spirits. <laughs> Look at me. Oh, have mercy. I'm feeling this thing. Yeah, we should let me alone this moment. Let the hear. He said, now, now notice this. There's going to come a time when you can't do it no more. Every time I go to the YMCA and I scan my little thing, the barcode, I lean my little forehead over so they can take my temperature since we're in the middle of COVID. Yep, you're okay. Thank you. As soon as I take about five steps, I hit a basketball. Damn. What's up, T? Come on in here. Tell everything there's a time and a season. That's over. That's over right there. Mm -mm. The only thing I'm bouncing there is this gospel, baby. That, that's done right there. I'm going to be praying for y'all out there. It's nighttime for that. It's daytime for a prayer walk. See, and some of us need to understand that, guess what? Uh, that time right there, that's gone. 
a nighttime on that right here, and you put that to bed. Yes. Daytime is for what you were sent to do. I'm going to say it again. All right. So we ain't feeling that right now. Some of us still think it's daytime. We think it's mid-noon. Okay, you still ain't catch you. God saying it's day. It's night. You keep saying it's day. Oh, all right, y'all. Yeah. See, y'all know y'all. It's amazing. Boy, y'all, oh, yeah, that's oh, yeah. Then y'all go cold moments. Man, y'all are like a good refrigerator. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all like good refrigerator. Anybody want to buy a refrigerator? I'm saying, look here, just calm down. Twenty seven point one calorie roll. You just take your choice of refrigerator you want. We got one that make ice. We got one that soon as you open up, feel like an acne. <laughs> Give a good word to him. <laughs> it is. So there's going to come a time when you will not be able to do the work that's assigned to you. That time period would be over. Translation, you said, I got three years to do this thing. Amen. After that, I'm not going to be able to do it anymore. And guess what? What's going to happen is I'm going to transfer I'm going to transfer the purpose to you. See, it's going to be night for me but it's going to be day for you. See, uh, see not all of us going to work at the same time. Lord, I hate it. Second and third shift. Lord, have mercy. Oh Lord, get, let me get up at six in the morning. I can't. I, uh, nah, day shift. You know when you get from three to eleven, like you there all day long. And then you go go uh, eleven to seven. Lord, have mercy. About three o'clock, I'm looking at you, but I'm sleep. <laughs> I, I remember I was working in the ER when I was in school UGA, and uh, and this woman, you know, I was working in registration. She she was sick, and she 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 was there, and I was sleep. Eyes wide open. And I don't know how long I was asleep before she got my attention. All I remember her finally saying, Sir! I said, huh? She said, you may be ignoring me. I said, well, I've been sleeping. <laughs> my body was out of whack because it wasn't used to working at that time. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. I, it, okay, maybe y'all ain't catching it. What I'm trying to tell you is there's some folks looking at you, but you sleep. It's night and your body know it's night. But you think it's day. Okay. Somebody said, please hurry up. I can't take no more. I have been flogged to death. There's a sister that you saying, that is a bomb and give it that. Okay, y'all don't like that. Either. Y'all ain't feeling I love y'all. Ain't nobody say I love you back. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Only I abide the alone, Lord. <laughs> all men have forsake me. It is. She says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the life of the world. She says, as long as I'm here, I can illuminate dark situations. Okay, let, let, let me help you. Amen. If you can only work when it's day, but what makes and determines a night from day is light. Good God Almighty. See, as long as Jesus is around, it's always daytime. Okay, y'all y'all don't catch that. But sometimes we don't want the Lord around. Depending on what we're doing. Okay, y'all ain't like that either. I, I got a few. A few, you right. You right. You right. Hey, y'all look at somebody and say, Lord, it, it don't look right. Don't look. Anybody ever did that? You didn't feel comfortable, you just don't look, Lord. You hold it. I swear y'all say. <laughs> well, y'all, some holy folks, praise the Lord. 
He said, as long as I'm here, I can illuminate the world. And see, as long as he in the world and he can illuminate, you can see. As long as he's there, you can now walk in the light. The beautiful light. Oh, good God, everybody. Y'all don't know the old William? Come where the dew drops of mercy. Shout out around me. Good God, everybody. My day and my night. Jesus, the, the light of the world. See, some of y'all want to be like Teddy. Y'all want to keep them, turn them on. When the Lord say turn them on. I'm trying to get clear, but some of y'all are like, get turn on, turn it on. Because you're ashamed of who you are. I gotta stop. I'm gonna say I can't go no more. I'm gonna move on. Yeah. Somebody say glory. <laughs> Here we go. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground. Now, this is extremely interesting. The Jews believe that the spill of the firstborn had miraculous power. So the way God may do something for one person. He may do it totally different for you. Amen. He may not deliver them and heal them the way that he does it for you. Amen. Uh, what he does for each one of us may differ to turn on his purpose and the glory he desires to get out of the situation. Amen. So so he may he may make a way for me to get a call. Mm -hmm. And he, he gonna give the grace and the provision to pay for it over a period of time. But for you. You may walk into it and, and just crank them up and ain't got to pay nobody now. And then I'm going to have to go back and repent. Go, Lord, what, what, what's up with that? Well, why don't you give me glory that I keep paying the payments, player? Oh, glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. I was paying on them, Lord. I was a kid. I ain't paying on them. Oh, he just makes some, may make somebody pay for it for you. I receive. I receive. I receive. Some of y'all got, got my daughters in know You know my daughter, my daughter said, you my dad. You spoke to. Y'all got that kind of knowing? No, all right, all right, all right. Here, here, here. Here it is. He spat on the ground. He made it wet with spit. Yeah. Jesus ain't never seen it. His spit holy. Amen. His spit is sanctified. Amen. See, when, when you have never seen everything in you and everything that comes from you is anointed and holy and pure. Let's take this thing back. He spits in the ground. Which literally means that he transfers some of his presence into the ground. And the ground that is cursed because of Adam, he now spits in it and makes it whole. So that when he gets ready to put this eye salve on him, it, he ain't working with cursed stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, the reason that some of this medicine has side effects is because they, they get it, but there's a curse in it. Oh, yeah. It helps you in one area, but it helps you in another area. But when the Lord is spitting with his curse, it's holy, and then you can use it with no side effects. Thank you, God. Good God Almighty. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I, I don't like taking medicine. I, 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 I don't. They can. My wife and family tell you, my, my mama said, mm, 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 mm. I got my prescription. Boy, you bet I got my prescription. We're all, I got my prescription. Well, why you get them? I got my prescription. <laughs> I got my prescription. And I'm going be, I got my prescription. <laughs> I remember the 
for his transgression. I, I brood for his victory. <laughs> y'all got me? See, those are just symptoms. But his word is true. He said his word healed them. But the problem is, and guess what? When you read this word, it'll be health yeah. to your marrow. Yeah. But God Almighty, if you trust the word more than you trust on people. I had to go, Jesus, just spit in him. <laughs> you can do it right from heaven, then let it drop right on him. <laughs> See, yeah, it's in the book, ain't eh? it? I believe if I read it in the Word, I'll just Lord do it. He and him. Because, it, boy, you crazy. You believe me like that. It's spit in there. Amen. Lord, just have an angel touch you. Whatever your name is, yeah. you supposed to minister to me. I'm going to add a salvation and touch you. Amen. Okay, so y'all don't think like that. Bless your heart. You better start thinking like that. Right. All right. All right. I remember I'm going to hold you with our health insurance. And God told me to. And he said, I'm going to take care of you. I said, okay, Lord. I said, now you said it. Amen. And I'm going to believe it. And I walked in divine health for a full year. Amen. Went to a doctor one time and I told them what was wrong. And then when they told me, I said, I ain't even go back. <laughs> I said, when you going back? I ain't. You all right? Yep. <laughs> Why you ain't going back? Why don't I go back to the Holy Ghost already told me? <laughs> well, why did they go? Let every word be confirmed by what, two or three witnesses. I didn't need another confirmation. Okay, y'all don't need y'all out. Let's y'all Look at here. He made clay of the spill. Say this with me. It don't look good. It don't look good. It don't sound good. It don't sound Matter of fact, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. See, sometimes how God do it going to look disgusting. Yeah. Now, have you ever seen somebody work up some spit? <laughs> do it feel like God doing you like that right now? The sounds of how he's doing it sounds disgusting. Yeah. And then when he really now look at this. Can you see the disciple? Who yeah. oh, he didn't spit in the ground. <laughs> now we know Jesus gonna do some crazy stuff, man. I mean, what you let that do to him you might? I don't let it do it, man. Man, if you wanna see you, you let us do it. See, if you and you and I are gonna have to make sure that we don't get an attitude by the conversation and by the sounds of how God is gonna do it. How many of us get an attitude because of the sounds around us in the conversation about us? Let them talk and let God speak. Yeah, remember y'all would look and say, you do anything you want, but if you spit on me, it's on. If you spit on me, you brutal. I don't care how much I love Jesus. You spit on me, it is brutal. But what does God do? <laughs> okay. You guys true, I'm doing good. But prayer life is strong, you make me go back. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. Some anointings comes by way of a disgusting method. <laughs> okay, y'all don't want to work with me. Some anointings, when healing needs to take forth, comes through disgusting methods. Mm -hmm. 
And it comes through conversation that can trigger anger. And if you can get past the conversation and the method and trust Jesus, restoration can come. All right. See, an anointing from Jesus can bring restoration not only for you but for the ones who are talking about you. See this spit in the ground has already changed the mindset of the disciples. It's about to change the eyesight of this man. Is later on going to be a witness to the Pharisees. Because now their opposition to Jesus, based on some of the stuff they believe that the spittle of the firstborn. Okay. Jesus is the firstborn of the Father, the firstborn of Mary. And when he's going to give his testimony, see, his testimony of his blindness and his encounter with Jesus is going to give them an opportunity for them to come out of their blindness. Right. Your story is going to help somebody else. Right. Your blindness and restoration from blindness is going to help somebody else. Your deliverance testimony is going to help somebody else. Yes. Your falling and getting back up is going to help somebody else who's on the ground right now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. He said to him, go wash in the pool of Simone. Go, go get in the diving pool of Simone, which literally means scent. The waters from that pool would flow down from the mountains. So, so if you let the one who is sent spit, then go to the pool of Siloam, which means scent. See, you got to deal with the scent man of God in the scent place of God. Amen. See, you're going to have to go there to complete the process. Amen. See, the thing about he's anointed you, but now you got to be obedient and go where I tell you to go if you want to see the full manifestation of the restoration of your sight. See, some people don't want to take the faith trip of walking with spit and mud in their eyes and go to the pool see some stuff God is going to require that you walk by faith and not by sight you want to say hey am I going in the right direction Mike hey hey anybody around me which direction keep straight okay hey hey hey, hey. which way Take a letter, okay? Oh, yeah, okay, y'all ain't catching me. Yeah, see, see, how you get in there when you can't see, you're going to have to trust some other folks to direct you to the proper place. You're going to have to trust somebody at some point in time to stop being independent of other people and think that you can have this walk of faith by yourself. You don't need nobody but Jesus. You don't need somebody else besides Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. Keep trying to walk by yourself. You're going to need some help. Amen. You're going to need some help from some people. Amen. And then there's going to be some places that got some resources to help you. Amen. See, 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 this pool of Simone had the water resource to wash off the mud and the spit. All right. It is. He went his way, therefore, obedience, washed, and came seen. Washed and came seen. But Lord, why can't you just touch him like you did the other man? Why you got to put mud on him? Well, look, if, if, if he needs to do, if, 
if he needs to replace the cornea or whatever is necessary, y'all gonna catch him in a minute. If he needs to give you an eye transplant with some mud, as long as it works, don't worry about the process. See, for some of us, God don't let some folk throw some mud on our eyes. But they let them know why before they did it, God spit it. <laughs> he approved the process. Okay, y'all gonna catch it in a minute. There's some stuff that's been done to you when folks don't put mud in your eyes, so to speak, as we say in the world. But what they don't know is God ahead already. He's the one who spit and made the dirt mud. Y'all gonna catch that in a minute. He is the one who spit and made the dirt on you mud. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Then he gave you the water to wash it off. Okay. See, sometimes when God tells us to go places, it's to wash. It's to wash off the mud. Y'all y'all gonna catch, we're gonna catch that in a minute. Sometimes when God tells us to go places, it's now I got the spit and the mud on me. Now I gotta go through the washing process. See, some folks gonna stay blind. They got the mud on them, they got the anointed spit, but they ain't in the wrong place. Amen. I'll say that again. They got the anointing of the mud, but they in the wrong place. I didn't say good God. I said close the road. Why? Why you in the other road? Amen. You anointed with the mud. But you need to be washed. Yeah. And the water resource is just in that place. Yeah. Y'all go catch it in a minute. I know what God told me. Uh, this where you're supposed to be. See, and you ain't going to get washed till you get down there. Lord, they ain't got but a, they ain't even got a red light. It's just a blinking yellow light. Do you want to be washed? Do you want restoration? You better get on down there, then. Do you want me to heal you? Do you want me to mend you? Do you want to walk in my purpose? You better get down there. Uh, all right. All right. Good God Almighty. What the Bible says what he did. Say he went his way. Wash. Came back sin. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't look like I did when y'all saw me the last time. Oh, okay, y'all don't catch that. Uh -huh. I was blind when y'all saw me. I was full of anger and offense and hurt, but not no more. I used to say you, but now I can live. They go to folks. They go to folks. Because as soon as you come back and you're not the way that you used to be, God has to have some folks to say, is that really you? Oh, it's me. 27 pounds heavier. I know it don't look like it, but 27 pounds heavier. Thank you for the customs, Mama Dollars. You want Mama Tossin? Mom and the rest of them. They had me in me out. But boy, the Lord has fattened me out down here. We're going to go about, I went up to a size 36 now. 34 likes of skin tight pants. Good God Almighty. Why? Obedience. Obedience. That grandma said, boy, your figure look good now. Your figure look good. I can see you from heaven right now. I said, baby, your figure look good. Obedience do good things for you, y'all. 
Even my mama confirmed. She said, oh, I like that weight on you. I said, I do too, Paul. I ain't gone good. Got so good that she had to come down here with me. It is. Neighbors. Neighbors. These are the folks who hung around, that knew him, that grew up around him. The, the neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, It is not this he that sat in bed. See, you, you can all only identify with my old pre Jesus life. But you, you're going to have to come from that time period and come from BC before Christ to AD. After deliverance. <laughs> after the demon was cast out. After depression. After the divorce. Y'all ain't with me. <laughs> Here it is. Everybody got a question about that brother. Some of them said, did he? The others said, look like it. He said, I'm he. That's your teeth, isn't it? Why are you going to pick up some weight, ain't you? See, when the face is the same in the face, but why are you going to pick up no weight, ain't you? Yep. You don't see anybody then, you know, when you talk about you, then when you get up on you smile and they're like, why are you smiling? I love, when I go back to the ass and I love the shop folks, and well, who, who I know before I got down here. Isn't that what I said, like? You like they were scared to speak. Right. Lift your hands. <laughs> Lift up them on the hands. Without wrath. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it, it is. Yeah. He said, he therefore said there unto him, here it is. How were thy eyes open? Mm -hmm. Who did this to you? <laughs> See, now to get the Bible says. If any man asks you the reason of your hope, Amen. be always be ready to give an answer. Amen. I don't care what goes on in your life and my life. And when God does magnificent stuff, the first name that should come off your lips. God, my Father, through His Son Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit has touched me. Ooh, you got time to listen? Do you have time? Let, let, me, ooh, let me tell you, well, I would do everything that they could produce. Everything that could come from Colombia, South America, everything, uh, everything they could bring from Jamaica. Yeah, okay. Everything that came out the womb that had curves. <laughs> oh, every clear water that they could get out of Tennessee. Y'all don't know about clear water from Tennessee. Do you? Talk that two step. <laughs> every lie that they had hell could fashion to seem like a true my toe. But let me tell you about how he gonna touch my lips. He gonna clean up my speech. Yeah. He, he said, and keep it simple, y'all. Mm -hmm. Just tell the story. Yes, Just as it happened. Yes, Don't add nothing to it. Yes, Don't take nothing away. Yes, because if you keep the testimony pure, yeah. then the restoration of the healing yeah. will spring forth speed. And a lot of times folk can't really come because we won't tell the truth of the story because we're ashamed of what God don't did for us. Yeah. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To the Jew first and then the Gentile. Don't be ashamed of your story, what you came from, what you did, how God delivered you, how to bring you out, because it's for somebody else to read your living epistle and come to the faith in Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. 
way it is. Oh, yes, Lord. He, he said, Amen. Mm -hmm. Then to call Jesus. Yeah. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Lord have mercy. I want to go old school, Holy Ghost, saying, Bless that wonderful name. Mm -hmm. Okay, see, y'all, you old school. Lord, I know some of y'all grew up in old school church. Y'all want to bless that wonderful name of Jesus and all the whole church be going on? Maybe y'all won't like that name. Maybe y'all won't love that name. One day, your knee gonna have to bow. Your mouth gonna have to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. You better give him some dance now. You better thank him now. You better bless that wonderful name of Jesus right now. By that name, Jesus, demons are cast away. By that name, my prayers are being cast. By that name, my child is being cast. My weary days turn into joyful days. That man called Jesus, that royal walker, my bright and morning star, my very present help, my refuge, my strength, my secret place, my hiding place, my great high priest, whoever lived to make intercession. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The one who sent back the Holy Ghost, who filled me with all power, the one who has graced me, gifted me, called me, sent me, blessed me, raised me up, laid me down, watched over me, keep me, preserve me, Jesus. Oh, God, I said, you know. When you tell folks your story, look here, they ain't gonna get excited if you ain't excited about it. You sit there talking about Jesus did it. Man, who want that Jesus you talking about? Look here. Look here. The reason a lot of us got into deeper sin is because folk made it sound good. Yeah, yeah. You ain't changed that yet. Ooh, you gotta change some of this. It ain't peaked our interest. Now, now, now we told that kind of story and now that you got Jesus all of a sudden you want to lose your enthusiasm you want to lose your excitement you think you just got an old I'm going to say that they're sitting there with, no, with not, not to be interested in come on y'all you should be more excited about Jesus and your life in Christ and your grace in Christ than anything we ever did in the world with the devil and by the devil let me hear you. He said, man, he anointed my eye. And I couldn't see nothing. I was wondering what they were doing. They were talking about me. Well, I messed up. Well, then my mom and dad, you know more than dad, right? You know, y'all came over to the house and heat. I couldn't see you, but I could hear you. <laughs> I, I, I recognize your boy. I know you came. I know you came. I'm only got saying, you want to get on another piece of bread? Yeah, I know it was you. See, even when you're preaching, you got to make it sound good. You got to keep it real, like they say. I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> see, now that I can see we can hang out together now. Right. If we broke bread together, I just couldn't see who you were. Right. Right. Look at me, here it is. See, he annoyed my eyes. Then he told me to go to the pool of Salon and wash. I went and I washed and I received sight. I was looking at the process. He told me where to go. I went where he told me to go. I did what he told me to do. And then I received the benefits of my obedience when I did what he told me to do. I went where he told me to win. See, think about that. Some folks want the end result, but they don't want to do the first two things. There are folks who want the, want the end result without the first two acts of obedience. The first two acts of obedience which brings you into agreement. Get 
gives you what you really want. Sometimes I've had people ask me, Pastor Troy, why? I said, have you talked to God? Have you heard from him? Have you did what he told you to do? If you did what he told you to do, oh, you got to do it relax now. That's it. I know the Lord told me to throw some pills away. He said, don't even take no more. I said, don't take no more. He said, that ain't working. I said, Lord, you're right. That ain't working. I said, you don't like nothing no way. He said, don't take them. When you go back, tell that man you don't want no, I don't need no refill. <laughs> All right, I got a ball of this on you. Why do you keep spit, you know, skipping dosage? Well, I replaced that what I said. I replaced that one right there for the evening with Jeremiah here, and I should be here saying I should be saying. Yeah, that's that's the way my brain works. And then one for tomorrow, I'm going to put Psalm 103 on there. Let's go right on my soul. Let's go on my soul. Let's go on my soul. Let's go on my soul. Forget not that they will heal all that disease. Crown the blood, kind of ten mercy. So I ain't going to take that one. So every time you appear on your scripture. Good God, my y'all don't catch that one down the line. So I'm going to keep that bottle right there. I forgot how much I paid for that bottle. But boy, the value of it just keep going up and up and up and up. It's saving me a lot of money. I hear it is. Here it is. Now, this is kid when they start asking you, where? <laughs> if he did it right there, I want to see him. Where, where he at? He said, I know not. I don't know where he at. I just know I admit what I did what he said. And I, I just see the end result. Sometimes you're not going to be able to give the full explanation of God. Sometimes your duty is simply to give your testimony. So that off your testimony and the witness of what God has done for you, they start seeking for themselves. And when folks find out from the Lord for themselves, your story and my story is simply a signpost to point them to God. And a lot of times we think that we are the stop sign where they get everything. And a lot of us messed up trying to be a stop sign saying, this is it. When we're really supposed to be a sign simply to point people to Jesus. And sometimes what happens is instead of you being a sign that points, you have become a stop sign and you're holding somebody up. Amen. They stop at you and they get Jesus. They stop at you and then get to the pool of Simone. They stop at you instead of fresh water, they get dirty water. I better stop right there because yeah, y'all were waiting for a while. I don't want to get y'all off my tip. We're going to stop right there. We're going to hold right there. The point that I'm trying to make and that I want to get across today is this. When there's an opportunity, when the Lord is passing by, He doesn't want to go past you without correcting you and correcting me. Why? Because every time he makes a stop in our lives, he gets more glory. He gets more glory and the more glory he gets out of us, the more people that are drawn to him. And the more people that come to him through our testimony of how he worked in our lives, he gets more glory. We get to share our story. And the Bible says this in the book of Proverbs, a soul winner is wise. Amen. And if you're wise and have wisdom, the Bible says riches and honor is in his right hand. And honor 
Get a little. Okay, Lord have mercy. Every time you tell your story and you become a soul winner, you become wise and you start drawing stuff to yourself. Why? You are valuable now. So God can invest in you every time you tell somebody about him and what he's done for you. He invests in you some more. Why? It's like being working for Channel 5, Channel 11, CNN, MSNBC. If you tell them the story, they are paying you to tell the story that they present. Every time you tell about the good news of the gospel, you become a good news reporter. And you ain't got fake news, no lies. You got the truth. Lord, y'all saying, though, come on, I got too much in me. I knew it was going to be something else, but when I was about, about walking like a drunk man coming down here because the enemy was trying to hit me. One thing I love about Jesus, he manifests the totality of who he is and who he was upon the cross. The different things that we're facing, we go through, all came about because of the sin of one man. The Bible says, by one man sin entered the world and death by sin. But also by one man came righteousness. The Bible says the first man was a living soul. The first Adam was a living soul. The second Adam was a life-giving spirit. And no matter what it is and what you have gone through, Jesus is the answer for all things. The Bible says the fullness of the Godhead dwell in him bodily. You feel like you're about to give up on life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In the life. In him we live, we move, and have our being. If you need salvation, he will give you his salvation, and he's already taken your sin, and it's been nailed upon the cross. Whatever it is you need. You want to exchange his peace and his joy for your depression and your anxiety. How about giving him the sickness that he's already paid for? And you take his healing power. Somebody need that. Just say, I receive your healing power, Lord. And just sit in the area where you need it. Just say, Lord, I, I, I do an exchange with you. You have already taken upon yourself our infirmities. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I receive the healing. I receive the deliverance. I receive the provision for my life. I receive the restoration. I receive the reconciliation. The rejection that I'm feeling. I receive your acceptance in Christ because I'm accepted in the beloved. That spirit of rejection will no longer rule me. I will receive the spirit of adoption placing me into the family of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. If you're here today and you're looking for a church home, the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit is directing you. I want to invite you.